Karinka. Yeah. yeah. What? Well. <laughs> oh, I missed that. <laughs> that's how, yeah, that's how Harris gets anybody to do anything. He goes, you won't. <laughs> and then you got to do it. All right. Thank you. Um, are are we gonna introduce like ourselves in our podcast again, like kind of in depth, like we did last time? Or, um, I mean, we should always start. I think we should get, just have that habit of like starting okay. with a with that. This is Academy of Dread, a podcast uh -huh. about blah 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 blah. Like, probably be better if we like formatted that way, which is yeah. gonna make the first episode of the season like, wow, we were rusty. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, it's all good. Hey. <laughs> yeah, when we recorded with Bo, it was like we were just like trying to figure out like what we like. What? How did we do this? Like we, it's been so long, we like, kind of forgot what we always did. Yeah. And like, yeah, recording remotely is like totally new to us too. Um, but well, yeah, you were like, in one place, right? Yeah, yeah. We would record at Mimi's apartment and have like nice mics on stands and stuff like that. Um, and look at this. Good <laughs> now. Yeah, look at us now in 2020. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we are. All right. Um, okay, let's let's launch into it. Mimi, you want to start us? Sure. Oh, we're recording already? I've been recording. Okay, uh, let's get the three seconds of silence oh, yeah, right. for room noise. Okay. Right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's always okay. the hardest part. Yes. Um, welcome, everybody, to... Cadmium Dread. <laughs> the art podcast uh we are your hosts mimi nguyen and joshua Karenka. yes this is the oh oh sorry okay <laughs> and we're recording <laughs> remotely because uh everybody has to stay at home yeah so it's hard for me to you know read people's body language because there's there is no there is body none. language <laughs> yeah but we're, so we're gonna I... do our best everybody yes i was just hey, gonna say Corona. oh, oh. <laughs> There we go. Oh, what was that? Is that, Who was is, that? that is that this is that this week's guest? I think it is. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, this week we have Josh Harris as our guest. Say hi. You mean Harris? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So yeah, to the to to the observant listener, yes, both of our names are Josh. So this week, uh, it's Harris and Karenka. No more Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Effects. Yeah, it, providing effects will be Harris. Yeah. yeah. And... So this is the uh, podcast where we talk about art and creative stuff, and we are both me and Josh, me and Karenka, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> are both uh, artists in the entertainment industry, and we like to invite other friends who are also artists onto the show, and we just talk about um, art stuff. Yeah, talk about the the life, the art the life. life. Yeah. A struggle. Yeah. A full who hooey. Exactly. <laughs> full hooey. All the ballyhoo. Whatever that Scuttle. means. Yep. Uh, yeah, right. and uh, today's art guest is uh, is Harris. Uh, I work with Harris uh, back in the Machine Zone days. That's how we know each other. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was. Uh, we were both. On uh, Game of War when we started out, um, going through the uh, the trenches and stuff, and uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was tough, but it was good times, you know. And uh, I think we got a lot of a lot of cool stories we can maybe reminisce on, maybe talk about um, how how we or how you got there and go from there. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. So well, I I think that. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> we keep cutting each other off. That's the problem with this. I oh, know you're good. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I wanted um, I've been wanting Harris on the show for some time because I think he's got a a really cool sort of like unique story of um, you know, getting to the the art like path or what have you. And um, yeah. Uh, I I I kind of want to like throw the ball over to you and let you talk a bit about that stuff. Like, uh, just kind of start from how I got in the industry, basically? Um, yeah, we could we could start there. We could go a bit further back, like, how you ended up going to, like, art school in the first place. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, sure. 
right. So to speed up a very, very long story into a few minutes or maybe a little more than that. Um, so I grew up with a very shitty childhood. Uh, drawing was my escape. I ventured into my own imagination. It basically shielded me from all the bull, fewy, hooey or whatever, the bullshit um, that was kind of happening at the time. Mm. I naturally fell in love with drawing and coloring and uh, it was actually uh, the genie from Aladdin. It was the original thing that I drew like hundreds of times. Oh, I'm really? Wow. Getting it down to, hey, it doesn't look like a giant smear on a paper, right? <laughs> but yeah. I through that, uh, it just kind of stuck with me. And, you know, art teachers in school figured it out like, oh, this guy can draw or whatever kid can draw. And, you know, they show me things here and there. And over time, got pretty decent. Um, to high school and i had to audition into this uh arts program i actually had a broken collarbone from racing bmx i had to draw still life and i had to show off a portfolio which was full of monsters and shit that i would see in like psm magazine or <laughs> nice. just draw like recreate you know metal gear solid uh, images and stuff like that and uh so i ended up getting into this place they shut like pretty much it was like a fine arts Little program that sped you up into getting ready for college or art college. And out of seven classes a day, I had uh, four art classes. So you can tell Florida education right there. Three, <laughs> three fundamentals and four art classes for entire high school adventure. I, mean, I wish. I wish that was my uh, high school. It was, it was awesome. That's the only way I graduated high school. Uh, <laughs> I graduated by half a credit, by the way. Wow. This is a uh, feat in itself. We'll go Florida educate. <laughs> anyway, so I, uh, you know, fell in love with art through that whole time. And again, it was my way out. Uh, I was actually adopted by another family who I went to school with the, the, the son, right? And we became best friends and we we're inseparable at that point. Basically, brothers, dad adopted me. Uh, parental guardianship whatever mm -hmm. uh same thing pretty much anyways uh through i think it was right after 9 11 happened uh my brother was uh, pretty much a, a all-star athlete football player I'd go to school for you know football and i was supposed to go to school for art mm -hmm. well he's like i'm fuck that i'm gonna go in the marines and i'm like say what pump the brakes <laughs> wait i thought we were both gonna like go to school and like you know on that adventure and he's like no 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 i'll go in the marines i want to be something there and badass and i'm just like i joined the marines <laughs> you know this is like little kids is like i go to he's like i don't know it's up to you anyways long story short uh i end up joining the marines with my brother and we both go in at the same time we we're both in the same boot camp same platoon we stood across from each other from our, our racks uh, we graduated boot camp together. We went into our school of infantry together. Uh, we were actually sharing the same bunk. He, I was on the top bunk. He was on the bottom bunk. And then um, from there, we went to Washington, D.C., where we're both presidential security. Did that together for two years. Painted a shitload of murals, like tons of murals all over the Marine Corps. We even have like uh, all the drawings and stuff that I did in boot camp. You know, they're funny story so you're not really supposed to draw or do anything exciting other than write letters home right right i'd be like drawing on napkins and any any scrap paper i'd find you know and, and i used to take care of the gear locker so i had unlimited supply of this clear tape so i emanate everything after i got done drawing it oh, nice. well we we're supposed to go to the rifle range and our drill instructors come out they're like hey motherfuckers you motherfuckers know how to draw and paint and then i'm just like sitting there like nope me <laughs> keep going on dude i'm not even nope blank face and uh some asshole in the front of the hub bay is like crew harris his bible and i'm like oh shit someone just dimed me out the <laughs> bible was the only thing that they weren't allowed to touch what i did is i put all my drawings and everything in there like i drew over the pages for all you religious people don't don't string me up and keep me alive. <laughs> um, anyways, don't at me. It comes down. <laughs> yeah. Sergeant comes down. He's like, "See the Bible, boy." And I'm like, oh. "Sergeant, that's on rush." Never forget this, dude. 
I'm like, oh, damn it. Give him the, the Bible. And he's flipping through it and he's pulling shit out. And he's just like, looks at me he's like, you did this? I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to get murdered. Oh, <laughs> man, this is going to be like hella religious. And he's going to fucking kill me. Like the most human voice I've heard from this dude. He goes, why the fuck did you join the Marines? I'm like, <laughs> like it like broke me, dude. I was like, what? So anyway, long story short, like, dude, these are fantastic so i ended up painting this range flag which was on a pillowcase and we won a trophy for it in the boot camp which ended up making us an honor platoon because we won by one uh award huh. it's like oh shit. anyways uh i got to do that it was pretty crazy fast forwarding back uh to the front again uh, when i was in dc i would trade thing murals uh to have days off right so in the in the military you earn leave and you know it's just basically like pto right oh so i would basically you know say they're like, oh we want a new you know alpha company banner thing on the wall i was like oh, i'll paint it just give me four days off and they're like done so i'd be spending like a night or two after uh getting off from work or whatever just painting this thing and you know they're still there to this day which is hilarious there's Dude, probably like awesome. 50 coats of varnish on it I'm going to be a, you know, go back to DC one day and I'm going to be an old man. But like, yeah, I did those there, Sonny. <laughs> better, better take care of that, you know? <laughs> yes. What do they look like? Like, can you describe them? Uh, so the one that was on our, on our deck, so we're the third, uh, at the top floor, there was Sergeant Platoon. I, I didn't paint anything for their, their, uh, their deck. Beneath that third floor was our deck. Um, and I wear the A2 Earth Pigs. And what Earth Pigs are is basically a machine gun pit back in like World War II, always muddy. And they just like this impenetrable little pit. And they call them Earth Pigs because like a little warthog inside the, the bush, you know, it's very hard to pull that thing out. They're, that's why the name came from. But anyways, I painted this. It looked like fucking Rocksteady from Ninja Turtles. And he's got this big Gatling gun. And it's uh, 11 foot tall by probably 16, seven feet wide. Dude, full full acrylic from Michaels. Painted, it probably took me three weeks to paint this thing. But um, I have a picture of it. I'll send you a picture. That way you can yeah, post it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You can definitely post it. I remember I, you showed us this this one. I, this, I remember yeah, seeing it, at it's least. It's like the red one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really cool. <laughs> he's got his knee up and he's, he's standing on a pile of skulls. And it's funny because, you know, Marines always talk shit. So, the different platoons who would talk shit on who's the best platoon so i painted this giant warthog fucking rock, rock steady dude on the machine gun you know smoke coming out of it the whole background's like this red and black and there's razor wire everywhere and he's standing on these skulls and on the on the foreheads of these skulls i put like sdp which is silent drill platoon <laughs> uh, a1 a2 or you know like just or a3 sorry so, so you like talk shit oh, on the my, murals? Like, yeah, <laughs> I even put uh, Bravo Company on there too, which was hilarious. And it's funny because like uh, I think it was like a few weeks later, they would come over and just kind of like paint out. Wow! They would come over and come and paint out their name, and I would be like, "No, no, fuck that!" I would just write it back. It was so <laughs> funny. It, it went back and forth like that for like a good six months. For our company commanders, like catch you on our deck. We're gonna we're gonna wreck you guys. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let the world. Some awesome like and, rivalry. <laughs> Should go yeah, on. it was awesome. Uh, so yeah, I painted the color guards, deck, which was I don't remember what floor they were on. I don't remember, but anyways, we're all in ACO. There was just tons of Harris, you know, graffiti paintings everywhere, all over the damn place. They're apparently still all there to to this day. So, fucking cool. That's really cool that they left uh, it. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's how I got in the industry of, of this whole shebang of gaming and stuff. Is um, So I got out of the Marine Corps. Uh, I was like, all right, cool. What am I going to do now? I uh, got an offer for the Secret Service. I was like, nah. Border Patrol, nah. Man, what the hell do I want to do? I don't want to be a cop. I don't want to do this stuff anymore. And um, my brother's dad, the guy who adopted me, was like, dude, you've always done art. Why don't you look that up? I was like, oh, okay, so as I was starting to kind of inquire, uh, not even inquire, it was just kind of like having that thought, um, I got recalled back into the Marine Corps. 
Um, so I went and checked in and all this crap, went over to Camp Pendleton, um, you know, everything checking in. And they ended up having a formation and, you know, calling us all out and saying, oh, okay, we don't really need you because Obama, you know, is taking all the 15,000 people that we need and they're just saying, you, you know, we don't need you anymore. I'm sorry, you're short, basically. And I was like, oh, shit, what the hell am I going to do? And, you know, I'm in so SoCal, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, so I to L.A. and you know, this is the mecca for entertainment stuff. Yeah. So I started looking around at schools. Actually, sign up to go to um, in uh, San Francisco Academy of Art University, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I sign up for this, and I actually do everything, uh, send the GI Bill stuff. And the lady sends me my my first like schedule. I'm like, why is this animation? Like, I don't know if that's what I want to do. I, I don't see any, like monster class. Like, I want to draw monsters. Right. And the lady was like, oh, that's a different uh, different subject or d different you know course i was like well can i take that and she's like well you can't just whatever classes and, and make a degree out of it i was like well i don't want the degree i want to learn how to make monsters so yeah. like that's it and she's like well it's not gonna really work and get you a job i'm like well i don't care i'll figure it out <laughs> but it's long story short i was like all right you know what this is not what i wanted to do this is very expensive because they made you buy like cameras and shit and i was like oh, yeah. i can't afford this crap this is nuts it's I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. So I stayed down in LA and I ended up going to this really shitty school, which no longer because it uh, exists. It's called Westwood. I don't know if I can say that, but whatever. Hmm. Who cares? No, I mean, um, I've talked so much shit on Santa Cruz, so you, you can talk shit on whatever you want here. <laughs> Santa Cruz it's, still exists. <laughs> and Santa Cruz still exists. And I hope they hear everything I've said about them and the art department there. I'm going I'm to email, email them. Good. <laughs> In double, double Josh disapproval. Yeah. About that shit. Anyways, uh, so I went to school. It was really shitty. Actually, uh, I was going to do 3D art. And at the time, I drew everything on uh, Bristol board with 2H pencils, 2H lead. I wanted to be a comic book artist. Very, very undecisive, right? Then I wanted to make monsters. And then I started doing comic book stuff. Mm. And while I was learning 3D, it was just a melted crayon box of just random shit. Yeah, just different um, ways of making monsters, though, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, I did. That's what yeah. I did. I just drew monsters all the time. And I still have all of those drawings. Uh, my original portfolio, too. It's all on Bristol board, everything. Um, Damn. Yeah, so I did that yeah. for a while. Realized that school was garbage because I, I made a car in 3D and the teacher was like, oh, man, this is so great. And I looked at her and I was like, are you, are you serious? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, good job. And I'm like, this is fucking horrible. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? I can look at this and say, someone special made this, and I'm not wow. special. <laughs> oh, Clearly, man. there's a disconnect between what you're teaching me and how I'm understanding it. I went, said, fuck it, I'm quitting this school. Uh, spent two years there. Wasted two out of my three years of my GI Bill at this fucking terrible place. I, I, my last year, I very very lucky to find someone who was going to the los angeles uh recording school and he's like oh man they have like an art thing over there and you should check it out so i went on this house thing and was blown away by the student work you know it was, it was amazing mm -hmm. it was uh at the film school i spent my last year of my gi bill at film school totally turned around uh just garbage knowledge base that westwood gave me to I was kind of, oh, I get this. And I was kind of learning everything there was to be for 3D, you know. Built a BMW X6 car. It actually looked amazing. I still have renders of it. I have a turntable of it. It was, it was pretty awesome. I'm still pretty proud of that, even though I'm near 10 years old now. Wow. Um, yeah, so then, uh, long story short, uh, I was like, I don't really want to do 3D. I was like, okay, 3D, I can't go to Art Center. So that that kind of path is kind of closed right now because you know art center is like 150 super expensive to go to that yeah so i'm like all right cool i need to figure out what i can do to leverage money um the guy who works on uh zbrush at pixelogic his name is paul gabori he was our zbrush teacher at the school and you know he was teaching me everything he's like oh man you're like really natural at sculpting and you know goes all the way back to that high school day of you know we had pottery class and would always 
old orc heads while everyone's making like mugs and shit. And That's my awesome. teachers are like, "Yeah, you're never gonna make any living sculpting and making these monsters." And I'm like, "Look at me now, fuckers." Anyways, <laughs> um, but that sculpting came back to the 3D sculpting and ZBrush, so I was like really into it. And you know, one day I just flipped of the switch. I was like, "This shit ain't for me." Unfortunately, Paul Gaborio was like, "Oh man, I got." you set up, I'm going to have you talk to, um, uh, uh inter not interview, but like kind of network with these, these people at sideshow collectibles and see if you can start kind of you know, going down that path. Cool. I kind of like blew off that interview and he was pretty pissed at me and he was like, dude, where the hell are you at? And I was like, dude, I want to be a concept artist. And he just put like, dot, 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 like what? <laughs> I was like, well, so you did. That's what yeah. I want to do, man. And yeah. So from that point on, I think I had like, maybe five months of school left. So I was, I, I went to the VA and I was like, Hey, maintain my education benefits. What grade point average do I need to maintain? But, oh, you just need to maintain a, a, a C average. <laughs> I'm like doing <laughs> all awesome. this like calculation. And I'm like, all right, what do I need to do to get a C average? And the lady was like, Oh, well you can get like a few D's and then mostly C's and then support that with like a few A's and it leverages out. I was like, okay, I can do that. I started going, okay, what are, what is my schedule? Okay, I have uh, compositing and fucking nuke. I have like animation. So I was like, I went to the teacher. I was like, hey, do I need to get a D in this class? Because I'm not interested in this shit. Just need to make sure I get a D. So he would help, you know, tell me. And I would just like literally blow off everything. And I would just spend that time uh, painting, right? Uh, so I made a Facebook at that time. And I used it only to contact people worked in the industry and I saw their work and I'd be like, Hey, on this piece, you, in this area, you have this like stroke or this brush stroke or whatever. How did you achieve this? And people were like, what the fuck? This is so specific and so weird. But you know, they would tell me and would just keep practicing what it is that they're saying. Uh, even, um, what is his name? Uh, Danny Beck, that dude, he was one of the very first people I was like bugging the shit out of. And, uh, <laughs> when I was in college about all this stuff. And he'd be like, oh man, you know, you add more color variation. I'm like, what the fuck is color variation? So I'm like, you know, trying to not you know, ask him like, what is it? And an idiot, but I would like Google it or like look it up. And right, okay. one day I was, I was so upset. I'm not getting this. I got to go to school. Oh man, I don't have money to go to school, you know, to art center. And I was like drinking a bunch of booze with like my buddy Nico. And I was like drunk as shit and I was painting and it just like clicked. Holy shit. You know, and then I'll, t I'll explain it to you. Okay. So when I was painting in Photoshop, I didn't really like, I was kind of like, I was sketching very lightly. So the, the, you know, the pixels and the paint weren't really on top of itself. And when I was drunk that night and I was like, just keep going, 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 I kept building up over each brushstroke that I was painting until it looked like that buttery, smooth, kind of Photoshop-y kind of painting, you know? Uh, yeah. And it, I saw it, like, holy shit, I did it. I just kept painting and I was like, oh, and it, it dawned on me. I was like, fuck, you gotta like build this up. This is not something that you just, you know, dibble dabble and make it, you know, light brush strokes everywhere and you're like, done. It looks like terrible shit, right? Yeah. Um, I think I at know what you mean. that point, it's just like building up, you know, if you work with like, percent opacity and you know you do like a few brush strokes it's gonna look like like charcoal on paper you know right until you really start laying down paint over and over and over right. and it starts getting that buttery smooth kind of photoshop is kind of famous for when you look at digital paintings you know it has this really butter smooth kind of like oil paint yeah uh, anyways i started like just painting everything i was like non-stop just fucking all day every minute i had i was just painting painting, painting. and people were like dude he's like fucking nuts <laughs> i have a whole lot of time to make this work to then figure out what i need to do in like five four to five months right yeah um so i was on this fast track of this boot camp and in, inside my head of just like learn how to do this so long longer story short i graduate <laughs> Uh, college and I go down to one of my buddies who was there when me and my brother were in high school he was kind of our mentor who was kind of the role model of the marine stuff that was influencing us as, as kids 
he was a marine he was a badass marine like like a fighter and just like he was like very vicious and mm-hmm. he, he showed us warhammer and all this crazy stuff um no, that's what I, I ended up from. yeah yeah I, you know, I went down to San Diego and, you know, spent a month with him because his wife was deployed because she had joined the Marine Corps a year before my brother and I did. Um, oh. We had three kids, so I was helping him, like, take care of kids and didn't have any money or tuition at that point anymore to, like, you know, keep living in L.A. So I was like, fuck, I'll just go and stay with them. And I just kept painting, painting and playing World of Warcraft. Um, and actually, to, to stop there for a second... I got out of the Marine Corps, I was introduced to World of Warcraft. So I was like super <laughs> invested in this damn game for many years, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what spurred this whole you know, stylistic choice because I just fell in love with how WoW looked. It was it was wonky, but it was like serious. It was yeah. fantasy. It was like all in, in my wheelhouse. Even though I didn't know what any of it meant. Just like, man, I really fucking love this. Something love about it spoke to you, yeah. Yeah, it fucking had orcs. It had orcs. And I was <laughs> like, dude, how, how can you get any better than this? You have fantasy, you have this like whimsical, kind of wonky approach. You have like, like the hand painted texture, and then you have orcs. You're just like, fuck, dude, okay, rest in peace. Kill me. I'm good. You know, I'm happy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, oh, to uh, anybody who hasn't taken a look at Harris's work, uh, you can see <laughs> that he grew up, you know, with the Warcraft stuff, and yeah, it's it, you, you, yeah, you got the the Warcraft look like down, and we'll get we'll I mean, talk I more spent, about that. I, yeah, spent ten years fucking figuring it out. So yeah, yeah, I didn't get it by then. So like, <laughs> look, man, that ship has sailed, dude. You yeah. gotta find something else. <laughs> but you did, you did get it though. Did good. You did good. Um, did did it. Uh, but anyway, so I leave off. Oh, right. I was uh, down in San Diego for a month. Right. And I, I, I call my brother. His name is John. Um, but we're not, like, related. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, dude, John, what, what am I supposed to do? He's like, apply, man. I'm like, fuck, I don't I'm a, like, I was very afraid to apply because I was, a, I guess, I, ultimately, I was afraid of rejection, right? Because mm-hmm. at the time, we were building Warhammer miniatures. We were playing, you know, him and I were both very good PVPers. So we we're always just blasting people in, in 2v2 mm-hmm. arenas and then we were doing world pvp and it was like mountain dew world pvp or sorry mountain dew world of warcraft warhammer miniatures and art that's literally what i did for like two months um until i started that's applying life, yeah <laughs> it was uh, it yeah. was like it was it, it felt like a fraction of a day like all of that combined yeah it's just like, it was crazy um Anyways, so I started applying places, and rem- so remember the Facebook thing I was telling you about. I made it just to like add people in the industry. Yeah, just what happened. I added this, this guy, um, Tyler Fluharty. He was kind of a, a weird guy, uh, trolly kind of guy. So I added him on Facebook, and he had hit me up. He's like, "Hey, man, we like your art." Uh, I think there's going to be a job position opening up here. Do you do you want me to send your stuff? I was like, holy shit. I was like, yeah, man. As long story short, I ended up doing this whole like application thing. I get this job at S2 Games, and they made Heroes of New Earth. Oh, yeah. Failure of uh, Strife and Savage. Um, I don't but anyways, that. so I, I get this job, and they're like, hey, uh, when can you start? And I'm like, and I'm like holding my hand over the phone. I'm like, John when should i start <laughs> like I don't know. when do you want to start and i get back on the phone i'm like how's tomorrow <laughs> john face and the the art director's face at st is like wait what tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow i was like yeah man like let's do this he's like well that's a little soon like you know that's not how this works i was like oh okay cool uh well when do you want me to start and he's like well how, how's like uh or something or you know whatever it is and then I'm thinking in my head, like, why the fuck they asked me then? Like, if you already have a number, why don't you just tell me? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, you could have been like, oh, I have something in a month or something. But yeah, yeah, that's that's the the reality. Okay, you know me. This all makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the I'm time, like, I'm like, oh? yeah, yeah. You're, you're like, I, I just imagine you were like, yeah, why not start in a day? <laughs> like, whatever, dude, this is a drive. 
I got all my shit. I could put it in a, in a car. Yeah. Do it. They weren't ready for the the Harris Initiative. Oh. So, uh, yeah, so I, I move all the way up to this place called Ronert Park, which is a complete shithole. It's like a mess town. Oh, wow. Uh, and I mean, to me, I was just like, whatever. I lived in South Central LA. Like, that's not horrible. Right. I, I've lived in Anacostia, DC, like really shitty places, right? Okay. Um, so I was like, oh, this one's nice. It's like country, you know, awesome. Right? Yeah. I'm down with this. Uh, so, anyways, I start there and literally have a desk so a fucking like fold out table and this place looks like a bachelor pad there's holes in the wall there's like empty pizza boxes cans everywhere just total fraternity vibe right okay isn't there like right place like <laughs> fuck not what i was expecting oh huh. um, so, yeah so i i ended up working there for and a half and uh so so back up a little bit. Okay. I got the job there as a 3D artist. Okay. Because I minute ditch effort. I learned low poly modeling and hand painted textures and stuff like that as like a very last, like within like two weeks, right? I was learning how to bake maps out and all this crap. Uh-huh. And that fight or flight mentality kicked in and I was like, oh, yeah, understand this. Cool. A bunch of really shitty models. Um, this company hired me. I was there for four days trying to learn uh, 3ds Max because I was a Maya baby, uh-huh. and it was just like this Max is fucking horrible. I do not <laughs> want to use it. I do not like this at all. Um, That's I'm, what I you know me. I'm not, I'm not a I'm not a technical guy. Like yeah, yeah. Like, like calculator and and phone is like as high as technical ca- uh, capabilities that I go. <laughs> Uh, oh, on the fourth day, I wasn't really picking it up, and I was just like, can clearly tell that I was not happy with this. But, so instead of you know bitching about it, I would just paint when I wasn't happy. So I would you know go into my little place of painting, and uh-huh. you know everyone would see me painting. They're like, "Holy shit, dude! This guy is a fantastic painter. What the like?" You know, talked about it. The art director comes and he's like, "Hey." What do you feel doing like concept art? I was like, are you shitting me? Does a bear <laughs> shit in the woods? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, you know, within, you know, four or five days, I was a concept artist instead of a 3D artist. Dude, that's uh, that's the way to do it. Uh, that's how I started my concept art career. And uh, it was horrible, mind you. Like, don't get me wrong. I was terrible. Like, I'll show you some of the, the paintings I did. And it was Okay, sure. <laughs> Anyways, uh, up sitting next to this guy named Willie Riel, and he worked at uh, Blue Sky, he worked at Google, he's worked for DreamWorks, just fantastic fucking Viz Dev artist. I mean, amazing. Huh. And you know, multitude of styles in this current stuff is just so strong, but so simple, and. Uh, mind-boggling yeah I, I see his name on a lot of stuff as like either yeah. consultant his real or... name is Guillermo I don't I'm probably butchering it but <laughs> it's uh his name is Willie E-A-L like real but it's real oh okay um, he's getting so good and yeah. you know I'm the goofy dude sitting next to him like peeking over like oh man that's so cool and I would go back to look at myself like oh shit throw the PSD away start over and Oh, I forget what what kicked it off, but I am I, I asked him a question and it resonated with him, and we started going to get coffee. I just kept like looking him for more information, and I guess he saw that he was kind of like my, you know, instructor, if you will, of like, you know, I'm still not great at design, you know, mm-hmm. like doesn't you know pick up stuff until I do it a million, million, million times. Oh. I haven't hit that point yet, but anyways. He taught me so many different things that like opened up new possibilities, right? So I was just like, "Wow, this is crazy!" A lot of the shit I didn't really understand uh, when he was talking about like shape language, and I, I thought too deep into everything. Mm-hmm. This is what, what he was actually re- really trying to say. Um, so that's what caused me to be a slow learner. But eventually, over time, I started understanding what he was saying. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until like we we're like, "Oh, we're gonna start working on a new mobile game." And you know, that was 
the time this game called Dragon Veil was like dominating iPhone uh, game market, right? Mm-hmm. It was like number one top gross thing. It was just making like millions of dollars or whatever. And S2 Games was going to start like making a game that was ripping that off. And then I was like, what the fuck? Why would I want to make a ripoff game? Why wouldn't I just go to the place making the good one and like, help them, you know? Right. <laughs> Why would I rip this off? This is stupid. At the time, Willy Real was actually leaving S2 Games. So the only thing that kept me S2 Games was Willy, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone else was kind of like, they would play Heroes of New Earth and troll each other. And it was just like this fraternity vibe and and like that shit. Yeah. Like I hated it. Um, so when he left, I was just like, okay, well, time for me to go. So I applied to Hasbro, which had a substitute uh, studio called Backflip Studios that made Dragon Veil. Um, huh. I applied and never heard anything back from them. Uh, and it like, like, Months later, I just get an email from somebody like, "Hey, I saw that you applied to the 2D, 3D artist. Will you want to interview?" And I was like, "Oh shit, this is the company that I applied for. What? Why is it taking so long?" Anyways, long story short, uh, I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." Uh, I ended up getting hired there, and they were in Colorado, mm. right? I, you know, moved out to Colorado, and it was like two years there. Mm. That's when. Um, Kind of like stepped up my career a lot, you know. I worked on a bunch of different games. They're they're actually I'm sure that they closed the doors last year. They don't oh, that sucks. Exist anymore. Well, I mean that's what bad leadership does to you. Yeah, yeah I guess that's so. right. All, all you people in leadership listening to this, you're not fuck it up because <laughs> the doors will close, and then guess what? You're living out of a fucking TV box. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you do it. More people count on you to not fuck it up. I don't know how much leadership people listen to this, but. They should, because sometimes <laughs> sometimes we got stuff to say. We're just the artists, man. We're just trying to make the vision work. Uh, yeah, I did that for a while. Um, and stuff here and there. Uh, my office mate, uh, his name was Jim. Well, dude, this guy was a fucking beast. Like, he was a graffiti artist, like a professional graffiti artist. He did stuff for like Blue Moon. Uh, you know, very nice. like caricature kind of comic book style like how he drew yeah. and man his shit just inspired me dude like it was like his he both it was two people that shared an office and it was like literally like an office with a door you know right and when i i came to the interview there i was like the only person that really stuck out to me was jim like i really hope i get to like just next to this dude and absorb whatever the fuck he's doing because he's doing awesome stuff and somehow i got lucky when i got hired they're like oh yeah you're gonna sit with jim it's like <laughs> you ever see when when someone comes on the on the stage with a guitar and they like slide on their knees and they just like Burn! fucking like slide, yeah. yeah yeah dude i fucking did that <laughs> my head across for like a mile i was like yeah like i was so i was so hyped the Anyway, so yeah, I'd like this dude's office mate, you know, and fucking guy has got a heart of gold and, you know, fucking rock star artist. He just asked so many questions and was like, how did you do this? Or what were you thinking with this? And he came kind of became like, you know, really good friend. And, you know, he like showed me everything, how he was doing things. Hell, I even grew my, this is how I grew my toy collection because he was very into like you know, desk uh, clutter, right. I guess is if if you will and you know, I, I like he was kind of like a mentor to me it, maybe it wasn't officially like a mentor but i looked up to this dude yeah my desk was like fucking covered and shit I mean, you remember my desk crank i do like, <laughs> now i know where it started stacked. yeah and uh you know we have like nerf gun wars and he like you know we, we had like our fucking nerf guns on our desk locked and locked and loaded he was like ready to go at any time um yeah so uh well our art director there was a complete shitbag. Fucking hated the guy. Jim should have been the art director. I don't care if I get in trouble for that. I don't, whatever. Don't, Fuck that guy. No, don't um, worry about it. Just speak the heart, man. Oh, so, it's pretty much fed up. And my lead was a, a piece of shit, too. And instead of inspiring me and, like, explaining, like, what he needs, very passive aggressive about it and uh, it let you know like me I've, i'm not afraid of confrontation the marine corps taught me that well and when something's broken if 
dig until I find out what the root is, right? Right. And when when the broken thing is a person in a leadership position, you take that you know as a offense to them. And I'm just like, and and me, I'm not like meaning anything by it, but I'm like keep digging and prying and prying, going, why is this not working or what you know what the issue is? Yeah. To find out is this this fucking lead, and everybody didn't like the dude there until I started having these issues with him. And I'm very vocal about stuff. You know, yes. it's like, yes, what, what's, what's the fucking guy's problem? Like, what's Bill Studi's problem? Like, why is he such an asshole? Like, oh shit, oh you know, and then everyone piles into an office, and they all like everything. You're like, what? He's really that shitty? Oh my god, no wonder I'm having these problems. I started like, okay this guy needs to get fixed or i need to leave there's there's this fork in the road mm-hmm. uh so i know long story short come to find out guy is a piece of crap and i was like okay i need to leave uh and i had literally just had gotten my first hearthstone card as a freelance and um was doing that and that inspired me to kind of push my style even further because if you, you've seen dragon veil it's very like very uh tuny yeah. and you know, first started it was very kind of bootleg version of world of warcraft i didn't nail it very good but i was kind of almost there i went to s2 games didn't really have a style it was just kind of like uh like a neutral style i guess yeah and when i went to dragon veil it went really cartoony very very cartoony mm-hmm. then when i got my hearthstone card i had Figure out how to get back to World of Warcraft style. So it was kind of a, a, a lot of long, long, long night where I kind of made another epiphany. And I I had talked to this dude, Raphael Zanchenitan, and I'm sure you're familiar with his work. And he went from a grayscale image to a color image. And I hit him up on Facebook. And I'm like, hey, how did you do that? That's pretty cool. He told me, he's like, oh, man, you know, showed me everything. I started applying that and something clicked and drew this orc. I I can show that one to you as well. And I painted it in grayscale, put the colors on it, and I put it on uh, Facebook. And the next morning when I woke up, it had like 84 likes or something like that. I was just like floored. I was like, holy shit, you know? like That's a million likes to me, you know? Like, (laughs) holy fuck. This is crazy. And, you know, pick, big people like Ian and Melling from Blither was like, dude, this is fantastic. Dude, that's awesome. That, that inspired me to really, really, really push, plus the Hearthstone card. And I started doing that. And I think I had like two or three Hearthstone cards for, um, remember Josh Godin? Yeah. Josh Another, another Godin. Josh, yeah. <laughs> yeah at one time at mz on the art team there was five fucking joshes this yeah. is why we all went by last name exactly by the way it was josh deuce was the second one hired that's true and yeah it was the shit right yeah, yeah. that was a stupid joke <laughs> not really <laughs> i get it <laughs> um we'll add a ring anyway, yeah. i mean i'm always trying to throw dumbass jokes everywhere yeah I'm the king of dad jokes, even though I have no kids. I'm well, furry kids. I feel like I, I'm competing for that 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 crown. I don't know. If you and I were like in. I don't know, man. We were we were perfect. You would like throw one up, and I would like do that like crazy basketball move where you catch the ball and you like fucking slam it. <laughs> uh, layup, up right? Yeah. I'm not a sports yeah. guy either, but I'm know. pretty sure it's called layup. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Like man, hashtag sports ball. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, the, Josh Godin, I must have added him on Facebook, and he, like, hit me up, and he's like, hey, man, uh, fucking killer work, dude. Uh, we'll hire a 2D artist. You, you know, like, come out to California? And it funny story. I was looking at Machine Zone, because I was pretty smart back then for mm. how stupid I was. <laughs> I looked on the App Store, and I'm like, which game is making the top money? Yeah, Game of War. Who, who makes that? Who makes that game? Fuck, I'm going to go work there, you yeah. know? Like I, I use that as a leverage of like, I, I don't. This place has obviously got to have you know, stellar people running the show, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like looking at the, you know, on the app store, you could see like the the images before you download the game, and I'm like, holy yeah. fuck, dude, this is like fucking Dungeons and Dragons, bro. Look at this stuff. <laughs> I was, you know, super excited. I, you know, responded to that dude in all caps, like, fuck yes, let's do this. 
and set up my portfolio and, you know, flew out there and I had this interview I'll never forget. And uh, it was fucking hilarious. So it, it was pretty long. It was probably like, like it was long. Mm. And uh, I talked to like Nino. I talked to Linda. Yeah. I talked to shit, uh, Nate. Oh, yeah. And then Wiley came in. And, you know, I was a little intimidated because they're like, oh, here's Wiley. Yeah, he's the studio art director. And I'm like, holy shit, studio art director. I've never even fucking heard of that term before. Like, oh, man, this is this is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, he asked me this question about concept art. And it was kind of like an abstract question. I was like, oh, OK, I, I kind of pick up what he's going with. And he just wants to see how you think. Right. Yeah. So I started talking to him and and, you know, I was the feel kind of how he was responding and stuff and on a whim just grabbed the water bottle and i'm like look man this water bottle look at it it's kind of boring and you know and, and the water bottle was probably like a quarter full mm-hmm. and it's important for concept artists is to make something like this interesting he kind of looked at me like huh and i was like what well, here look and i unscrewed the lid crumpled it up it back down put it back on the table and i was like look now it's interesting he was like his fucking mind was blown dude he was like <laughs> what? he was so impressed by that and Whoa. it was funny i didn't actually know that he was impressed by that until like years down the road when he was like when i was getting promoted to lead or whatever and he was like you know that water bottle thing still sticks to, to me to this day i'm like water bottle thing what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> the, the water bottle dude, when you interviewed i was like oh shit i totally forgot about it like Oh shit, that's hilarious. This is the first I've heard about the water bottle thing. This is that's really funny to me. Right. And uh so that's how I got into Machine Zone. And uh so yeah, Machine Zone, I was Yeah. I just turned my style from cartoony to start painting Hearthstone cards. So it's kind of like this cartoony Warcraft style. And then I get to Machine Zone and they're like, Hey man, this fucking metal helmet and it needs to look like a, a picture. And I'm like, thanks, homie. Like, would you just ask me? You want me to paint a photo? Oh, fuck. What did I just get myself into? Mm, yeah. Uh, so Edgar had to, like, you know, show me. Linda had to show me. And Linda's like, you know what a smart object is? And I'm like, uh, is it smart? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I had the same, um, like, <laughs> problem when I started. And they were like, oh, you know all these, like, technical things about Photoshop? It's like, what? <laughs> I know what a layer is. You know, no, no. If Linda listens to this, Linda, listen. But no, she's gonna kill me for that. But anyways, <laughs> it's it it funny. She comes over and she's like, "Oh, that looks pretty good." And, and she's like, "Send me your PSD. I'll, I'll, I'll do a paint over, or whatever." You know, she was showing me something. Yeah. I send it to her, and she comes back. She's like, "Um, where is this?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, where is your layers? I'm like, "It's right there." She's like, "What? One layer?" I was like, yes, ma'am. She's like, <laughs> oh, my fucking God. And, uh, yeah, he decided to then teach me what smart objects were, what an additional layer was, um, <laughs> what groups were. Uh, asked about adjustment layers, and I'm like, a what? And she showed me what those were. Uh, I kind of, uh, you know, Mama, Mama Bear was like, come here. Come here, dummy. I, I need to show you. Yeah. Um, yeah, then Linda's you know, good at that. Linda's good at teaching all the all the ins and outs of. When she listens to this, she's probably gonna be fucking killing over laughing. Oh yeah, I think she's even gonna... to the day we were there. I'm we gonna make sure laughing. she listens but... to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, long story short, even though I keep saying that and going off on tangents, uh, I kept doing Hearthstone cards and you know, started getting good at painting shit for uh, Game of War. And we got this fucking horrible lead. I don't remember if you were there for um, a Josh song. Oh, I was there for the whole the whole show. He he started like right after me and Kelly. That's when I started realizing I wanted to be a leader in in all of this, a lead or leadership. Yeah, is, yeah. That dude was the worst, the fucking worst. And if you're listening to this Josh song, you had better been shaped up or you whoa okay whoa, okay <laughs> anyway uh, edit that one out i don't know maybe i don't know we might <laughs> we might or we might not we probably will. Awful. yeah it's very possible even, that even kelly, oh. ask kelly she'll tell you about him it was yeah terrible. we we 
Uh, Mimi's heard some stories about Josh's song. I've definitely talked about him before. Wow. Okay. Anyways, so that guy was a terrible leader, which kind of just naturally intervened to kind of be the, like the, the the middle person of what is happening right now. Yeah, that's that's something that I I remember very clearly was like Harris like stepping yeah. up and trying to like uh, pick up the the the, the sh- shattered pieces of like that sort of like leadership style that was going on. Yeah. And you know, the guy ended up leaving and I was like, well, you guys find someone to take over the team. Like I understand how to do all this and like, why, why should we let this thing fucking Jesus take the wheel and the crashes into off the cliff, you know, like yeah. I, I'll, I'll just keep maintaining it. Yeah. That's, thank that's God we had you meant. on that team because you like, they wouldn't, they took forever to find a new person for that, and then, but you were there steering the ship in the meantime. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So I did that, and uh, it's a, a political minefield of internal studio politics. Yeah. Uh, did it the best. Did the best that I could. Even even though, like, I'm actually pretty proud of that moment uh, in all of my leadership. Uh, remember, Ryan Portillo was always like the the one guy not in everything. Yeah. And the the day the very last bit before they hired uh Ash. Remember Ash? Yes. Remember Ryan Portillo was actually like laughing and and committing into all of the uh the shenanigans we would have, whereas when the first all happened, he was like, No, no way. Oh yeah, yeah. We we like we we it was melted like him down a little team. bit. Like we we yeah. got him finally to open up and everything. Yeah, it was really yeah. cool to see that yeah. at, at the end of that. That was like my one of my more prouder moments of like being maintained something that was a disaster and yeah. turned out really good. We became a um, hella solid team. Remember that um the the white I remember the white um whiteboard like yeah. drawing of the whole team. <laughs> Art. Yeah. 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 That was really good. I cool. still have that damn picture uh Edgar did for of me. Oh yeah. Oh man. Every I always show I know I'm that like, hey you want Look like as a cartoon. Yeah. They're like, yeah. I go to them. They're like, holy shit, that's you. Yeah. Oh man, those whiteboard yeah, I images. Do. I don't know where they are. I know somebody has them. At least Linda has them. I need to get those. I have, a, I have a full. I, mean, I got you next to the Shrek drawing you did, and it says, <laughs> "All older now." <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> oh man, I miss whiteboard drawings, man. Like everybody's working from home. We don't have that stuff. We don't have a big whiteboard we all get to draw on now. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. And then I went down to San Diego to start the studio down there, and that was a fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, the communication was just bad. It was the San I Diego forget that there was that, the, that period that like um, they the did the San month Diego vacation, thing. Like, came back to the tan, and you guys were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, when you got back. <laughs> I was like, like orange from all the the beaching, taking Mishu to the beach. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, yeah. oh man, those are good times. They were. They were. Until that. Huh? Until Gabe decided to. Until Gabe was like, "Oh, I'm gonna make uh, cryptocurrency and you know let go of all the artists." That the happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the end of that. Yeah. But, um, I landed at Blizzard after that, which was right. its own fucking nightmare. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, man, I still can't like. So I've you know I've heard about from you and and uh, and Fortune about your experiences at Blizzard, right. but man, I still can't believe like back then if you had told me that like, oh yeah, Harris in the future he's gonna go to Blizzard and he's not gonna like it, I would have like, I would have slapped you. I'd have been like, no way. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. I'm standing there, I'm standing there, and you know, this was horrible even before Fortune got there. And I'm just sitting there looking at the orc, you know, the big on statue in the courtyard. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I worked my ass off to get to this point, and it sucks. It really sucks. Like, you, I started like thinking, like, holy fuck, do I even want to be an artist anymore? Like, wow. if this is this is end game. This is like this is a raid. This is the end game. It's like congratulations, Apple. Like what? We just spent like years, you know, figuring this entire game out just to to win an Apple or something. Like, 
this was a fucking waste of time. Oh my god. I was I was very very adamant about just not being an artist and you know my life savings and throwing it into like learning how to do car stuff because you remember my car is yeah my own canvas and yeah you got some you've you've really transformed that car like i i feel like i looked away for a little bit and then i looked back at that car instagram of yours and it's very Mm -hmm. different now (laughs) it's very different from when you started yeah i was very very close to quitting art and just being like uh Dude, nope been, i don't want to do this it's been such a sad outcome yeah, yeah. i'm glad uh, you did i kind of stuck with it yeah so at but, what uh, point did you uh did your career transition into being a lead artist oh it so back when I took over the team uh after that lead left the politics that i mentioned was me trying to for that position was I kept being told that I didn't have enough experience doing it, which was hilarious because I was helping maintain that team uh, very well, like without a lead. I was like, what more experience do you need other than the present? Um, yeah. So it had its own kind of weirdness with that, but they ended up making me a lead outsourcing artist. Um, so then I managed pretty much all the outsourcing with this guy named Chris and it was kind of like an associate art director type of thing because you're like looking over everything and making sure it aligns with what the actual art directors on each project want yeah um that was kind of like the transition point it wasn't like i wouldn't say legit legit but it was kind of like internally like in in who i am that was kind of the waking up moment of of that leadership yeah It's like yeah. the it's like a smaller step towards that a little bit because you're not like leading your own team, but it there are a lot of like similar like responsibilities to that job, isn't there? It was like at one point there was fifteen different vendors that we were managing. Oh my god. Uh, we did the the total uh, annual we didn't have a budget. It was, it was a nightmare. Uh-huh. But we were like looking at how many assets that we were doing for that period of time. Yeah. It was like close to like eight million dollars, dude. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> money in Machine Zone it was a weird. It, it's like yeah. it was like Monopoly money. It was. <laughs> it really throws off your perception of what the real world world should be like. Um, oh. But fifteen vendors. Like I remember when I went back for like my short like return to MZ. I basically had like the same kind of job, just. A little bit more specific towards like the fantasy games like i wasn't handling everything but we only had like three or four vendors at that point with with the projects that i was on so and that was headache enough so 15 sounds crazy well do you remember they were like last minute like we need two thousand sales by next week and we're oh, like what yeah. okay so with the sales art too that makes sense yeah, it was it was like we had vendors on top of vendors just creating troops it's like hey we need eight eight things of troops in like a week they're yeah. like what oh geez it's like the demands yeah, like, the demands there were, were insane yeah it, it's the kind of shit that like i mean they ask the same thing of us in-house maybe not like with the same volume but like the same time frames i remember that yeah but hey we got a lot better at mz i think oh dude when i so that's what what caused so many much friction at Blizzard is when I left MZ. Like, even though MZ was a fucking nightmare, it was great in a way of you. You can condense a lot of time into a, a short amount of time. Yeah. It sounds weird, but it, it literally felt like we were there for like ten years. It was only like five of three years. I think. And, uh, yeah, I don't. It was not even three years for me. So yeah. Just learned so much stuff. So. When I left MZ to go to Blizzard on campus uh, down in SoCal here, uh-huh. I, I come in there and, you know, Blizzard moves slow as fuck. Like, <laughs> they're nails. Yeah. I come in the thing as, like, you know, the, the movie Cars. You know, I'm like Lightning McQueen, like, just like, ram, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. And, you know, I'm templatizing everything and saying, oh, here's the problem here. And everyone's like, who the fuck is this guy? 
needs to like some Ritalin. Like he needs to calm down. Like because I was just like you know MZ makes you just like, a million miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. I come yeah. in. The, this, this process is broken. We need to use utilize smart objects. And you know, Linda will be proud that I for smart objects at Blizzard. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, templatizing everything. And you know, the lead at the time was like, "Hey, man, you know we're not robots." Yeah, I know that. But if you want to aim good food over and over again, you got to document the recipe. He said, like, well, the game's like a living art guide. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So you tell me nothing here is documented? Nothing. Oh, you know, a so-and-so here and so-and-so there. They decide and hey, what? Sorry, uh, Harris, I don't know. You're, you're cutting out for me a little bit, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, we lost a little bit about what you were just saying, but I'm just going to. Okay, so I was saying, like, you know, if if everything is shamanistic knowledge and nothing is actually documented and people leave the company, how do you continue making the product? Yeah, that, like, knowledge no. leaves. Oh. oh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. And I'm like, no. Let's start documenting this crap. And that, you know, tell me, like, I, it, it comes off very, like, maybe rude or abrasive, yeah. but it's like, no, like, this is survival. Like, if you have a multi billion dollar game, you don't have it documented. That's like putting together an entire project and painting everything for this $50,000 freelance project. You look at the fucking top of your Photoshop and it says Untitled One really going to bet all that and not save it and not document everything? <laughs> oh, no. That's a really good uh, analogy. Yeah, it's like you're absolutely bonkers insane. Like, That's no, crazy. I'm not, I'm not going to put up for that. I, and I don't care what culture is at Blizzard. I don't care what you think. To document this because I didn't work my ass off for 10 years learning this style just to get here, just to be like, mm, we're going to keep doing this wrong. No, no, sir, we're not. Anyways, I fought and fought and fought and fought Fell on deaf ears many, many times. I even got in trouble for pushing it very, very hard mm. um, where I was like, man, fuck this place. And that was it for me. And then Fortune arrives. Oh, no. And, you know, has her own issues with how they onboard people and coming like a cult, you know, of how people want you to act or talk. You know, it's, just, it's nuts, dude. Um, plus the ego there is, is just so inflated and it's like, why mm. you don't really like you're banking on past success, but you're not really doing anything to, uh, provide future success. Mm. It's just, it's very strange. Um, anyways, uh, then, uh, yeah, it was like, fuck this and started applying around and in the startup and went out there to do outsource management. And probably the I wrote their full outsource pipeline. Wrote much on how we're going to uh, uh, tackle all of the outsourcing stuff. Mm -hmm. And to find out is like, oh well, they're still figuring out the game or the the full aspect of what they're doing. And so I started like mentoring the 2D artists and the concept guys. And, um, there wasn't a whole lot to outsource because we didn't have anything to outsource. Yeah, that's when I kind of ventured into being the full lead there and um, managing them and helping uh, another actual blizzard colleague from hearthstone we're actually helping kind of on that ship if you will of like how that thing gets made because there's a lot of folks that really it was like an app and then it turned into a game so a lot of the people that were there didn't necessarily have a whole bunch of experience making games so rely on the people that have that experience which is four or five total hmm. um so yeah that's where we're at now nice oh, right. cool. 35 36 years of just <laughs> boop, here we are wow yeah <laughs> long story short it's still kind yeah. of long <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah we're getting I mean, like, I got stupid stories that no, no, man. That's 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 the this kind of stuff we want to hear, man. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a a point A to point B. We want all the the short, like the, the the side quests. The... Yeah. 
quest. Yeah, I was just saying we're uh, running pretty close up on time, so I was wondering if there's anything else we want to get to. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it didn't feel like we talked for that long. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um... Tasmanian devil. No you know, shit, just man. come in. Blah, blah, blah. Um, well, I don't know. I feel like if you guys <laughs> wanted to know the the the, the journey of, of Josh Harris, you got it. Um, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, uh, but yeah, so it is, but... I I think yeah, there's like something to be said about like just not not just being like a, a like a talent or whatever, like a an art powerhouse or something. But you're also like a like a personality. I think everybody always like kind of it kind of you just stick in people's minds a little bit <laughs> oh are we doing our takeaways i don't know because we're like at the uh we're at the hour so yeah we can okay so i mean so do that... you want to do you want to like any other like uh specific topics you want to like go over i'll give i'll give advice i talked enough about me for this whole time i'll I give it like there's a lot of stuff there that we could yeah take away as advice so sure go for okay, it okay sure if you want to fast forward through everything to this point, take this advice. If you're an artist in the industry, it's not just about your craft. It's how you present yourself to a company, how you're an asset to that company. It's effectively a business in its own right. You have to understand every aspect. It's not just how good you draw. It's not how awesome your illustrations are or your designs are. It's how you interact with people. And the thing over my journey uh, that I've learned is actually craft usually comes last. Mm. If you're able to talk or, you know, not talk like as in lip service, but like communicate to people, how do you effectively cross teams? How do you make sure that the thing that you're designing or painting or whatever it is that you're working on, how does it influence other departments? Is there a live ops? Make sure that you get information from live ops. Uh, a good example from this is when we worked on Game of War, yeah. um, you know, I was okay at my craft. I wasn't the best. I wasn't the worst. I was okay at leadership. I wasn't the best. I wasn't the worst. Mm. The thing that I was really, really good at was asking questions. That's true. And, and, you know, we would get like a week or two weeks to do these things called PVEs, which was a monster. And it's just like a whole lineup of this shit of, of things that we had to make for this pv yeah and ultimately i was thinking like well how much money do these things make so i ended up making a meeting with live ops and went through every type of asset that we worked on as artists and i wanted to reprioritize which ones made the most money because we didn't have a lot of time assets so i was trying to re restructure how things were working yeah and I remember this. in doing so Live ops actually found out that PVEs made no money. Yet it was the most, the the most time, time spent. intensive. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of changed the course and what we did. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm thinking or going, you know, giving you as advice is it's not about the craft. It's it's how you interpret information. You know, aware of your situation around you within what you're working on, because. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you like to have a job for a long time, it behooves you. That's right. Big words for this guy. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes sense for you to ask questions so you can understand the aspect of where it's going and how you can wiggle it to last the longest. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The communication is is exactly how you do that. So if if you sit in a corner and you and you paint all day, that's awesome. Make time to be aware of what it is that you're doing and where that thing is going. And that way you're not sitting there going, I had a job, but where did it go? And, you know, that's, sort of that's actually thing. some pretty good advice. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Solid. And, uh, For sure. All right. Another advice, but about it because I went on a that longer piece. But anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to like, there was like a couple points where I was like, oh, that's a, that's a good bit to like distill some advice but man we've talked to it for so long i don't remember <laughs> oh well my takeaway yeah. is that we have so many incredible people on our podcast and i feel like like time after time the thing that makes these people so special is that um they're problem solvers i guess like like yeah. if you come across yeah like if you 
have a bump in the road. Um, it it seems like you just figure it out, you know, <laughs> like you put the work in to figure it out and um, yeah, yeah le learn how to um, I'd persevere, I guess. Where that comes from? All the way back. I was 17 and joined the Marines. Yeah. Oh, shit from anything. And going the Marines teach you failure is not an option. Hmm. For the mission that is that you're doing, literally does not matter if you die, die towards to making that mission. That's why you see when Marines jump on hand grenades to save the squad or, yeah. you know, like charge some crazy thing and die. You know, like there's always some way that failure is not an option. Yeah. Like, success is the only measurement of what you're there for. Yeah. So for me, you know, not knowing anything as a 17 year old going into the Marines, uh, that was my firing harness for the whole system. And the, uh, Everything that I learned on top of that basically just permanently set that understanding of how that works or that, that personality type or that drive. Mm -hmm. um, it really concrete that into the foundation. So, yeah. I mean, it has a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, but a lot of bad stuff of you being impatient and things like that. So mm. it comes with its pros and cons. So. I guess so. But I think some like specific, like how that has reflected in how you got to where you are as an artist, like using that sort of like drive, like when you run into the problem where you have like no network or you, you need to like learn things, but you don't know who to ask. Like you went out and just like asked everybody, you like just mm -hmm. found people in the industry and just started adding them and asked them questions about how they did stuff. Like that's a great way to learn. And I think a lot of people might not have the, the like, Oh no, I can't do that. But you can <laughs> look at Harris. He did it. Yeah. And and then just... I barely graduated. I on the ASVAB mm -hmm. scored one point higher than passing. <laughs> if I wasn't so like horrible at dancing, I would have been moonwalking out of that damn thing. Like, oh right. Ah, damn. Well, I mean, I think I've said it before, but super, you know, smart. for us artists, eh, grades don't really matter. So <laughs> don't, right. don't sweat true. the small stuff at school, I guess. Just focus on learning what you want to learn. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing you did was like you just the, the school system was like, I'll just do the bare minimum for what they want, because what you will focus on was what you wanted. And like, even though they were saying like, oh, you'll never get a job, you know, sculpting orcs. It's like, well, jokes on them because you, you do fucking oh, no. awesome paintings of orcs now. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what's actually funny about that? Sorry, I'll, I'll leave it with this. Yeah. Is I actually contacted my high school teachers probably shit. Three, four years ago, yeah, I, I sent them. I was like, "Hey, you know, I found him on Facebook." So Jim was like, "Man, it's been a while." He's like, "Holy shit! Look at you! Look at you! Holy crap!" You know, <laughs> and uh, so I sent him my work, and I was like, "Hey, you remember when uh, you used to get on me about drawing monsters and shit in class?" I do it for reals now, and he was like, "Holy shit! Look at you!" And he was like, "Would you ever come down and talk to the kids and you know students?" Uh, well, I mean. On the other side of the country, but if I was ever over there, fuck yeah, I would do it. You know, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I hope that teacher learned that a little pretty... bit of something about how you know there's multiple paths to success. Yeah, because right. <laughs> I think a lot of teachers have that problem where they don't they don't see the creative like like people just like having to like get that creativity out of them as something positive, mm -hmm. but it should be. But yeah. Those are some good takeaways. Those are some good advice yeah. for all, all our our little listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I guess thank you for listening, everyone, and thank you, Harris, for joining thank us. Yes, thank you very much. Cool. No worries yeah. for inviting uh, inviting my goofy ass onto your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm happy you finally got your goofy ass on. <laughs> I said it's too bad uh, we weren't in the or whatever i'd bring me shoe and oh man well maybe one day in the future uh when the world's not on fire and we can all see each other in person that's gonna have to happen like a part two to harris on academy of dread but I'm, yeah. I'm down let's do it yeah awesome get the the microphones on the little standy thing yeah. all oh, professional yeah. get pictures yep. with the with the little cats <laughs> yeah hell yeah all right well yeah 
thank you for listening to Cadmium Dread, everybody. Yep. And yeah. Um... <laughs> follow us on <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> yeah, follow us on Instagram. Uh, if you want to. Cadmium Dread. Cadmium Dread. And uh, if, if you have any comments or, or questions or want to say anything to us, you know, hit us up there. Email us at Cadmium Dread at gmail.com. And yeah, just uh, keep uh, keep drawing, everybody. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right. Cool. We did it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good end. That was a, that was a good way to wrap it up. Uh, I yeah, was like, was. don't know uh, don't know what to say at the end of these ever. <laughs> Come out with like a, a a line that you say every time. We like ha- so we, we keep talking about this. We had one that we we did for a little bit because somebody gave us the idea of don't eat the paint. Which we kind of like that Perfect. line, but we kept forgetting to Perfect. say it. <laughs> Have a sticky note. Yeah. You know, before... I could record one right here, and in editing, we could just like <laughs> put it or in. You make the name of the show, Don't Eat the Paint. Uh, no, it's too late to Matt, change the name of the show. <laughs> Besides, well, you know what I mean? Dread like... is a really good name. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that's the thing. We I've had to explain the joke so many times. You know, like <laughs> the, the paint color, Cadmium Red. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but at least, when, I'm like, at least when people get it, it's like the oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, that's clever. Yeah, clever. that's Mimi's Actually, idea. Actually, I do have one request. I feel like if there's any case that we do have to like edit out someone's name or something. Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. Harris, would you mind saying right now? Beep. <laughs> And then we'll use that to edit. Go for it. I'll go. Mm-hmm. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Unique. I'm very unique. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There might be a few things where we need to like. Sometimes yeah. we just uh, make sure that, you know, it's it's not too many people Fire get thrown under the bus. Fire. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, cool. We got it. We got it. All right. <laughs> Oh man! Let me know when you guys want to do part part deuce. Hell yeah, man! Um, part deuce with Josh Deuce. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's got to hey, be what it's called if dude. we do that. All right. Well, uh, I, yeah. When we re- when we release this and stuff like that, you know, we'll <laughs> we'll let you know and we'll uh we'll like link all your 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 stuff like your your pages and 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 all that all that mm-hmm. good stuff. Right. Yeah. Good to me. Yeah. Uh, you want me to email you that stuff? Oh yeah, for sure. Because we like to add like links to to this or that or on the the website when yeah, we just, release these. Uh, email with the things that you need, and I'll just uh, be done probably like tonight or tomorrow or something. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Okay. Nice. All right. I got a scoop. Scoop. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, see thanks. you, Harris. Take it easy. Nice meeting you, Mimi. Nice to meet see you, you too. again, Josh. Yeah, see you. All right, later. Bye. Oh. Cool. Yeah, that was, it was story time, right? It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>